Then there was secondary separation. There was a big bang, which gave rise to galaxies, planets, and the present Earth we live in. Talking about the big bang theory. That's how the universe came into existence. So you tell him, but this is already mentioned in the Quran. 1400 years ago, in Surah Al-Ambiya, chapter 21, verse number 30, which says, Avalam yaral lazina kafaru. Do not the unbelievers see, anna samawati wal arda, kaan atarat kaan sakna huma, that the heavens and the earth were joined together, and we clove them asunder. Who could have mentioned about this big bang theory you're talking about, which was discovered yesterday in science? Yesterday means 30 years back, 100 years back. Quran mentions 14 years ago. Who could have mentioned that? So he will tell you, you know, maybe it's a flow. Don't argue it. Next part. You ask him, the, what was the initial state of the celestial matter before the universe was created? He will tell you, it is gas. You tell him, this book, the Quran says in Surah Fusila, chapter 41, verse number 11, that it was dukhan, it was smoke. So you ask him, is it right or wrong? He will tell you that smoke is more appropriate than gas, if you know the science well. You ask him, what is the shape of the earth? He will tell you it is spherical. So you ask him, when did you discover this? If you know the science well, he will tell you. In 1597, Sir Francis Drake was the first person who sailed around the earth. You tell him, Quran says in Surah Naziyat, chapter 79, verse number 30, Wal ardabad azalika dhaha. And thereafter, we have made the earth X shape, referring to the egg of an ostrich, which is not round like a ball. You tell him the Quran says the earth is not round like a ball. It is flattened from the top and bulging from the center. He says, yes, yes, that's more correct. It is geospherical. So you are telling it is round. Quran said it is geospherical 1400 years ago. Who could have mentioned that? Ah, your prophet who wrote the Quran. He's an intelligent person. No, you may say something. Don't argue. The light of the moon, its own light or reflected light, he will tell you reflected. Quran says in Surah Furqan, chapter 25, verse 61. I was taught in school, the sun was stationary, it didn't rotate about its axis. Quran says in Surah Al-Ambiya, chapter 21, verse number 33, Who Allah the khalaqa layl wa nahara? That it is Allah who has created the night and the day. Who shams our kamar, the sun and the moon. Kullun fi falaki yas bahun. Each one traveling in orbit with its own motion. Quran says the sun revolves and rotates. In school, I didn't learn that. I was taught it didn't rotate about its axis. It was stationary. He will tell you, no, latest discovery in science tells us that the sun also rotates and it takes about 25 days to complete one rotation. Who could have mentioned the Quran? Ask him. He will pause. Like that, Quran speaks about biology. Every living thing made from water. Who could have written that? Quran speaks about water cycle. How the water rise, falls, forms the clouds, clouds move in the interior, water falls down, and the water cycle is completed. Quran speaks about salt and sweet water. There are two types of water, salt and sweet water. Between them, the barrier which is forbidden to be trespassed. Surah Furqan, chapter 25, verse 53, and Surah Rahman, chapter 55, verse 19 to 20. Quran speaks about geology, that we have made the earth as an expanse, while Jibala Autada, and the mountain that stakes, Surah Naba, chapter 78, verse 6 and 7. Who could have mentioned that? Keep on asking. And the only answer he can give you, it can't be by fluke, because the theory of probability. You tell him about theory of probability, that the chances that if it's a fluke, for example, if I toss a coin, the chances that I'll be right is one out of two. It can either be heads or tails. And if I make a fluke, guess, the chances I'll be right is half, one upon two. If I toss a coin twice, the chances I'll be right both the time is half into half is one upon four, is 25%. If I toss a coin thrice, chances I'll be right all three times is one upon two into one upon two into one upon two is one upon eight, is 12 and a half percent. Similarly, if you use this probability theory to the Quran, that what are the possible shapes a person can think of for the earth? A person can think of about 30 shapes. It can be square, it can be flat, it can be quadrangle, it can be rectangle, it can be triangle, it can be spherical, 30 shapes. The chance that someone makes a wild guess, it's correct is one out of 30. Light of moon can be own light or reflected light. Chances someone makes a guess it's correct is one upon two. Chances both are correct is 1 upon 13 to 1 upon 2 is 1 upon 60. So a person wants to make a guess. Everything is created of what? In the deserts of Arabia, a person will first think of sand, of wood, of some other metal, aluminium, maybe iron, and maybe a person can think of 10,000 things which living creatures can be made of. Chances that he makes a wild guess, and it's correct, is 1 upon 10,000. Chances that all three are correct is 1 upon 13 to 1 upon 2 into 1 upon 10,000 is 1 upon 60,000. If you calculate, 
0.00017 is 0.017%. In three things that have come to 0.017%, if you put up all, Quran speaks about 1,000 verses about science. And mathematics tells us if 0, 0.00, if there are 50 zeros, it is equivalent to zero. So chances that it's a wild guess is zero. Who could have written that? He will tell you. Creator, maker, manufacturer. This creator we call as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I just told in short, for more details, refer to my video cassette, is the Quran God's word. Various techniques. Various techniques to prove the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Third question by the post is, how can you prove to a God that what is scriptures are wrong, etc.? In my talk today morning, I gave you a litmus test for theology, Surah class, chapter number 112, verse 1 to 4. So you tell him that if you are God, do you pass the test? Suppose someone says that this is a gold jewelry. I want to sell it to you. 24 karat gold. What will you do? Will you buy it? Will you buy it? You will say, first I'll check up whether it's true or not. You will check it with a touchstone. You'll go to a jeweler and say, see, there's a man who wants to sell me this jewelry. And he's telling you it's 24 karat gold. You'll go to a jeweler. He will take your jewelry and rub it against the touchstone. And he'll match the color. If it matches the 24 carat, he'll say 24 carat. If it matches the 22 carat, he will say 22 carat. If 18 carat, he will tell you 18 carat. It may not be gold at all, because all that glitters is not gold. So example of Rajnish which I gave, use Rajnish. For example, Rajnish, he's the almighty God. Put him to test of Surah class. Kul Allah samad, lam lam yulad, lam Let's put to test, as I told you in the morning that say he's Allah one and only. Is Rajnish one and only? Or anyone, any, anyone who claims to be God, whether it be Jesus, peace be upon him, whether it be Ram, Lakshman, anyone you put to test. Normally you use the hikmah, I don't use the main God, otherwise they'll feel insulted. Like Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter 6, verse 108, revile not those whom they worship God besides Allah, lest in the ignorance they will revile Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to these people who say that they are gods, you check them out with the test on Surah class, and you can prove that they aren't God. So if they aren't God, the scripture being right is out of the question at all. Hope that answers the question. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. I have a clarification to make. I, the hadith that you mentioned about marriage being half the deen, I just wanted to know, is it getting married completes half your deen, or the entire process of marriage, how you deal with marriage, how you deal with your husband or wife, the whole marriage, right from you get married to the rest of your life, or just the fact that you got married, it's half done? Sister, that's a very good question. That the hadith that marriage completes half your deen, does it mean that only marriage completes half your deen, or the whole process, etc.? Sister, as I mentioned, that when the Prophet said marriage completes half your deen, he meant that marriage prevents you from promiscuity, from fornication, from adultery. After that, marriage is a full process, various hadith. The beloved Prophet said that when you marry, you normally look for four things wealth, beauty, nobility, and virtue. Now, when you marry, people look, the girl is beautiful, or the boy is handsome, how wealthy he or she is, which family, Sheikh family, Sayyid family, noble family. And last is virtue. Prophet said, the most important of all these four is virtue. So when you get married, the whole process itself, you look for a virtuous wife or a virtuous husband, how you get married. A beloved Prophet said, the best marriage is that in which the least expense is made. We have marriage in the Muslim ummah in many countries. They spend hundreds and thousands of dollars and ring itself. 